Hey folks, Randy here with Dolan Cut and Trim. So, it's Easter Sunday. Happy Easter. Um, I wanted to talk to you guys for a couple minutes about uh, something that's been on my mind and figured I'd share it. And uh, Easter Sunday seems about as good a day as any to share it. So, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's a video on Easter and, you know, I'm a, I'm a follower of Jesus. So, I mean, you know, uh, this isn't really necessarily a lawn care video. Um, it's not even really a business video. Although I guess it kind of is, um, but uh, I don't know. I just want to talk to you guys um, with what's going on in the world, you know, with um, the pandemic and uh, businesses getting shut down. Um, I, I I wanted to talk to you guys about why um, I'm able to trust God through this and not panic. Um, that That's not to say I don't have like times where I have issues with it. Um, but generally speaking, I, I, I live my life with peace over what's going on. Um, I'm not scared. I'm not nervous. I mean, I do have moments where I feel those ways, but, uh, as generally speaking overall, I'm, I'm at peace. I know God's going to have his will in the situation and I trust, I trust him. And, uh, I, I wanted to give you guys kind of an idea of how I got to that place in my life. Um, like I said, this is not lawn care related. So, you know, if you want to just move on, wait for the next one, that's fine. Um, because this is probably going to be the most uh, Christ-centered video this channel's ever had. Um, and we've had some. <laughs> uh, so... Basically, I guess, well, I'll just get into it and, you know, whatever. So, I was never supposed to be born. Um, I, my uh, father and mother, uh, they got married in the early 80s. And um, not too long after they got married, my father was diagnosed with uh, multiple sclerosis. And this was before they had drugs to kind of, that would, I think now, drug, if you catch multiple sclerosis early enough, I believe it doesn't actually even affect you that much. Um, they uh, they got drugs that can essentially just kind of hold it in place. So whatever damage MS did before, uh, that that damage stays, but it won't do it, cause any more damage. But in the early 80s, that wasn't the case. And so my father was dealing with MS, and one of the complications from that uh, was that he was not going to be able to have kids. I, I, don't, I don't know all the ins and outs of that, but that's you know that's that was the deal, and he was eventually going to kill him. Um, he was uh, um, wheelchair bound, and uh, it wasn't looking good. Um, he had been a, a runner before that, um, and so without getting into his whole story, we can get into that another time. Um, God miraculously healed him. Um, there's documentation that says he had multiple sclerosis and there's documentation saying he no longer has it and there's no medical explanation for it. It's a, that's a whole nother story. Um, but a year or two after he was healed, um, my parents got pregnant with me. And so I've always kind of felt like I almost owed God something because <laughs> even though I know that's not really, I mean, that's kind of an understatement, I guess, in the broader sense. But because I wasn't supposed to be born, I always felt like I would got a little extra, even though I know that's not really how that works. Um, it's just kind of how my head's always processed it. But um, so I've always believed in uh, in Jesus um, and to the best of my ability, I've been a follower of his. Um, sometimes that ability is not the not that great, but, you know, human. What are you going to do? Um, and so... I've gone to church my whole life and I've maintained a relationship with God. And I'm, I'm kind of pre telling you all this stuff just so that the rest of the story makes more sense. Cause some of it might be a little weird if it's not something you're used to. Um, but I've really took to heart that scripture. It's, you know, referencing God where it says, you know, there's a friend that sticks closer to a brother. And, uh, you know, he's God is referenced several times in the Bible as being our heavenly father. I had an amazing relationship with my father. And so I took the, uh, idea behind that relationship I had with my dad and applied it to my heavenly father. So when I pray, it's not particularly fancy. Uh, it, uh, when I pray, it's kind of like when I'm talking to you right now, it's, I say, uh, um, a lot. <laughs> I laugh a lot while I'm praying. Um, 
and so, so, so I, I, yeah, so I'm just throwing that out there. So I had a pretty normal teenage uh, uh, or childhood. Um, but when I was a teenager, and I think it started when I was 16, I think, 16 or 17. Uh, yeah, I, th- I think so. Uh, my father got sick. Um, nope, nope, let me back up. That's not true. The story does start at 16, but that part hadn't happened yet. When I was 16, um, I played basketball. I was never in amazing shape, but I was definitely in physically better shape than I am now. And uh, I um, hurt my knee playing basketball. Went in for surgery or, you know, to see the doctor and ACL torn, MCL torn, every, all the other CLs stretched, uh, torn meniscus, um, all jacked up. I was going to require surgeries to get it done. And so I was like, okay. And so we were in church a couple weeks after that happened. And I was praying. And uh, I go to a Pentecostal church, okay? So this story is going to be really weird if you've never been to a Pentecostal church. (laughs) Uh, But uh, I was praying. It was during worship time. And I felt like God said, like, do you trust me? And I was like, "Uh, yeah. I was like 16 at the time. And uh, he was like, well... Everybody else is dancing. Why don't you start dancing too? Or running. I can't remember. And I was like, okay. And so I started dancing. And all the pain in my knee was gone. It was like my knee was completely fine. And, um, you know, it ended up being like a whole thing. We were talking about it at church because people knew I was, my knee was jacked up. And I went back to my doctor and, uh, uh, um, and I said, like, hey, this is, you know, what happened. Um, I think my knee's been healed. And my doctor took another look and was like, well, no, it's not. <laughs> it's still really jacked up. And I was embarrassed, man. And I was like, ah, I don't like that. You know, like that, you know, like you feel stupid, you know. I mean, some of you are probably watching this right now. And be like, well, yeah, you were stupid. <laughs> and that's not how I looked at it as a teenager. Um, I was like, man, this is, I just feel dumb. And, uh, uh, so, you know, I ended up having to have the knee surgery, but before, but while I was dealing with that, I felt like God was saying, to ask me again, like, Hey, do you trust me? And I was like, yeah, God, I trust you. And I was like, all right. And so I went through that and, uh, ended up getting a knee surgery, um, came out of all that. Um, to find out that, uh, when they went in there, it was actually way more damn because the, the, you know, medical technology has come a long way, but back then, so even back then, which this was like 2004, uh, 2003 or 2004. And, um, you know, so it's come a long way even since then. And so they were like, wait, we got in there and found out you were in worse shape than we thought. <laughs> we're gonna have to go back in. So like a month or two later, they had to operate on my knee again. And I was like, man. I was like, man, that was rough. And it was, like, so frustrating because I played basketball at the time. And, you know, I was, like, looking at my senior year. And I remember, like, like leaving the hospital one day because uh, I had physical therapy at the hospital. And uh, they, I was just frustrated. And I felt like God said, ask me again, like, hey, do you trust me? And I was like, yeah, man. And so... Uh, I, you know, then moved on and it was like, you know, maybe you start thinking to yourself, like, what, you know, what's going on? And it's like, well, maybe, maybe God let this happen to prepare me for something else. And, um, so as that whole situation was wrapping up for me, um, we found out that my father was uh, sick, uh, that he had cancer. And that was a really long situation and I'm not getting into the whole thing because I'll get emotional and I don't feel like it on here. <laughs> um, but I ended up having to take him to a lot of his uh, uh, chemo treatments, radiation treatments, and it was brutal. Um, I was 17 and it, it was a tough time, man. I didn't understand what was going on. I didn't understand why God would allow that to happen. And I mean, if I'm being honest, I still don't understand. Um, uh but, uh, you know, I, I was just doing my best to kind of like stay committed to God because, you know, my father was my best friend, too. So that made it even harder. And, you know, you would hit some stuff would happen, man. Like uh, he would have, you know, he had like strokes. I mean, I, I was driving him to uh, one of his sessions one time 
and uh, he, um, as we were driving, he forgot who I was. Like he was, and he was like freaking out, and he was like starting to have like uh, some kind of an attack. It was, it was just, it was awful. Um, and uh, you know, I remember going through that. You know, I mean, obviously he was going through it too, but we're talking about me right now. <laughs> and uh, I remember going through that, and uh, that that question came to me again. It's like, you know, like you know, Randy, do you trust me? And I'm going to be honest with you, man. There was a couple of times where I was like, uh, no, <laughs> no, I don't know what you're doing and I don't like it. <laughs> and, but you know, I would come back and like, yeah, no, I don't trust you, but help me to learn to trust you. And that situation got worse, man. It got worse and worse. It, and, and it, he didn't end up dying of cancer. He ended up dying. Uh, uh, he ended up getting a MRSA like in his heart, like a staph infection in his heart and he wasn't able to fight it off. And that last 50 days, some of the most intense, horrible times of my life, his too. <laughs> um, and he eventually died. Um, I was there when he died and my, whole, my family, <clears throat> excuse me, my family was. Um, it was a horrible time because, you know, th that was my best friend. And, you know, I don't talk to a lot of people. That's part of the reason why I talk to you guys so much. Because <laughs> I don't talk to a lot of people. And he was the main guy I talked to. And uh, so he died. And it was like that, you know, obviously this wasn't the only thing that God was saying or revealing to me or anything like that. I don't want him to come across that way. But it was like that question again, like, do you trust me? And I was like, trying. It's hard, but I'm trying. And, uh, you know, I started to get in my head. And I, I'm think, I think God put this there. Um, but I started getting in my head, like, you know, you're going through this because God's, God's trying to prepare you and build your faith with that, you know, that you trust him and that he, it may not work out the way you want, but it'll work out, you know, cause one of the things is like, my dad was always a, an amazing person. A lot of what I know about God, I learned from him. But he struggled a lot. But in those last, like, six months, he got closer to God than I've ever seen anybody get, at least up close. And so, like, I know when he died, he was in a right relationship with Jesus. And that means a lot to me. Um, I'm trying to skirt through this because I'll get emotional and I'm not doing that on a lawn care channel. <laughs> um, so I started getting the feeling like, you know, well, God is preparing me for, for, for something, something else. You know, he's teaching me to trust him in hard times. And so, you know, things progress along. Um, I got married and uh, uh, had a son. And, um, you know, it, it turned out uh, my son had some developmental needs. We didn't know fully um, what was going on. Um we found out, we eventually found out, you know, he, he was, he had chromosomal problems, which led to severe developmental delays, um, which led to, um, health problems, a lot of scary, like around, uh, I think right after he turned two, he started having seizures. And at first they weren't too bad. Like they would be like 30 seconds or a minute. <sighs> and, you know, uh, when, when you go through that with your kid, like that's, that's, terrifying man um and you know it, they started off like 30 seconds and then you know they might be a minute or two and then five minutes 10 minutes 15 minutes and I remember um the doctors uh uh telling us like hey don't you know as long as the seizure doesn't go more than 45 minutes it should be okay and then they would go for an hour <laughs> I remember one in particular where we were actually at church and he started seizing at, uh, at church and we ended up having to call the, uh, the ambulance and, uh, we ended up going to the hospital and I remember, um, my pastor texted me, um, you know, like while he's preaching, I guess, um, he texted me and was like, Hey, uh, how's Nate doing? And, um, I, I responded back and was like, you know, he's, he's still seizing. I mean, we're in the hospital. It had been almost two hours at this point. And he was like, okay, we're going to stop what we're doing. We're going to start praying for him. And, dude, I'm telling you, within a minute, 
of him saying that, my son's seizure stopped. And I was like, man, I mean, you know, you can call that a coincidence if you want. Uh, I'm not. Um, and so, you know, he, you start to realize, like, you know, uh, you serve a powerful God, you know? And I remember even during those times with my son, he was like, God was like, you know, do you trust me? And I was like, I'm doing the best I can. <laughs> and, um, you know, ugh, rough times, man. And, um, his, his, the seizures got worse and worse. Um, and one of the things though, and this is not connected to the seizures, but one of the things I was also struggling a lot with was paying my tithes, which is something you guys have heard me talk about on this channel a couple of times. Um, I wasn't good about it. Um, I was working for the government and you didn't make a whole lot of money and I was just not good about paying my tithes. Um, but as things were going with my son and they were getting worse, um, I felt like, uh, well, I don't want to get into all that, but it was time to make a change. And so I decided to, decided to go full time in my lawn care business. Um, but I realized if this was going to be successful, because somebody like me doesn't really have any business being successful in this kind of industry, um, I needed to make sure I had God on my side. And so I made a point that from that day forward, when I started my business, I would never miss on paying my tithes again. And I didn't. I made that decision in uh, February of 2016. And here we are, uh, April 2020. And uh, I've never missed a tithe since then. Um, and I saw immediately that when I trusted God with my finances, he took care of us. Didn't always do it in the way I wanted, but we were taken care of. And uh, so, so anyway, so I, I was realizing that, you know, when I put my f family's finances in his hands, we were fine. It was when I tried to do it on my own that there was a problem. And so going back to my son, so the seizures were getting worse and worse. And, you know, working for the government, I was a foster care caseworker. Um, which is a place where you would think they would put a emphasis on taking care of your family. Uh, but it turns out no. <laughs> so I had to leave there and uh, start my own business. Um, and, uh, uh, my son's seizures were getting worse. Like we were having to spend multiple days in the hospital. Um, they were bad. Some of the seizures, like I said, I were like three hours. Um, and, uh, uh, at some point in there, and this was this was weird. This was really weird. Um, but I was listening to a, listening to a song while we were in the hospital uh, by this band called Red. Um, I've been a fan of theirs pretty much since they came out, uh, which I think would have been like two thousand five. And uh, they have this song, and um, and I, I think the song is called Unbreakable. And the song, at least the way I interpret it, is. Uh, uh, um, is telling the story of a guy who's putting on a uh, strong face when people are around, but really they don't have that strength. Um, and the chorus almost has like this almost sarcastic tone to it. You know, where it says like, I'm, you know, I'm unstoppable, you know, I'm, I'm running with no brakes or something. I don't know. It's, it, 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 the song just kind of spoke to me. It just, it just really kind of spoke to where I was in my life where, you know, you're trying to put on this strong face for your kid, but good God, whenever nobody's around, just break down sobbing, you know, cause you don't understand what God's doing, you know? And I remembered like, I remembered hearing that song one time and it was the, it was so weird. I, I don't know how to explain this and I'm not gonna cause it's weird. Um, but I just had this image in my head while I was listening to that song where I saw like, uh, I saw my son, and when he was having a seizure, we were praying for him and calling out to God. And uh, uh, a lot of times it would work. And I, I had this image in my head. This It's weird. I had this image in my head that we were like fighting an enemy, um, like with swords. Um, but then as these seizures were getting worse, it was more and more of that enemy showing up. And we weren't able to fight them off. And I was like, I don't know how to fight them off, you know? And, and then I realized the only way to fight them off was to have more people on my side fighting with me. 
And so when like it, and it clicked for me, I was like, you know, when he has these seizures, we need to reach out to the people around us, like the other saints of God's God uh, to pray for our son with us. And so we started doing that. Um, our church has this like thing with small groups. So it's like, you know, 10, 15 people, I think. Um, and so when he would have a seizure, we would text them no matter what time of day or night. And uh, they would start praying with us. And we noticed a difference um, with his recoveries and with um, um, with the lengths of the seizures and stuff. And uh, um, it was like, man, you know, I felt like God was like showing me like, you know, if you trust me and you put you 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 seek after me, I'll take care of it. It's going to be fine. And it was like and it was through that um, between the finances and my son. I started realizing that, like, I don't understand what God's doing most of the time. And I don't try that hard to understand because I, even if I did understand, it probably wouldn't, still wouldn't make sense to me. Um, but I trust that he knows what he's doing. And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to trust and believe that the God I serve that's come through for me in the past with crazy times uh, will take care of me now. And so, you know, and it's kind of ironic because, uh, you know, now that I'm self-employed and every dollar matters so, so much and it's like you don't know if there's going to be more, I have such an easier time trusting God with my finances than I did uh, when I worked for the government. Because when I worked for the government, you know, that check was guaranteed, you know, like I, I, I was trusting in the government more than I was trusting in God, you know, but working for myself. It doesn't make sense, like, especially in the beginning, it doesn't make sense for people to hire me, you know. <laughs> And so the fact that they do, I, you know, I, I attribute to God looking out for me. And so it, it really helped over the last, those last four years, you know, seeing God put his head, you know, his hand of protection on my family. And, you know, the, the seizures with my son started going down. They, he doesn't have as many. Um, we still have to go to the hospital from time to time when he, when he does have them. But it's like we haven't had, we haven't had to be taken by helicopter anywhere and you know a uh, year and a half two years because that, yeah, that used to be a thing you know like we would either have to take a, um an ambulance or sometimes they were like no we'd have to airlift him he'd be like a, you know hooked up to a ventilator and all this stuff scary stuff man um and you know like a medical well yeah <laughs> not gonna know that uh sometimes doctors can, <laughs> sometimes doctors can arguably make it worse but i mean we were in pediatric icu many times um you know, when you start getting on a first name basis with the uh, uh, nurses, you know you've been there too much. By the way, Dale, I don't know why you would ever watch this, but Dale in the pediatric ICU at uh, um, the D.C. Children's Hospital, Dale is the man. If you ever run across somebody named Dale uh, over there, amazing guy. Um, <clears throat> I just lost my train of thought. I don't know. I don't know where I was going with that. I shouldn't give the shout out to Dale because now I can't remember what I was talking about. <laughs> oh, that did not keep that coffee warm. That's disappointing. So <sighs> I'm saying all that to kind of bring us up to where we are today. I've seen God take care of my family in hard times. I've seen him bring us through painful times. And so now that we're in a pandemic type situation where i mean god only knows what's going to happen economically in this country and god only knows what's going to happen health wise um i don't have fear man I, i'm not scared because i serve a god who has spent the last uh, 16 years teaching me that he can be trusted to bring me through hard times and so i'm not scared I'm not nervous. And I've got every reason to be scared and nervous. Right when they were shutting everything down, we had to take my son to the emergency room uh, by ambulance. And we had to go through like all the army tents and the people and the PPE and all that stuff. That was, if anything was going to be terrifying, it was that. Um, you know, they, so, you know, and I do sometimes struggle with that. But I'm reminded that I serve a God that I can trust. And when this thing first started, I felt like God asked me again, like, hey, do you trust me? And this time I was like, yes. And he said, good, because it's going to be fine. 
I don't know what that means. But I do know I've, I've been serving a God for a while that has made sure my family's been taken care of. Am I stressed? Sometimes. <laughs> you know, I got a son that has to visit hospitals sometimes. And I got a mother that works in the hospital. Uh, that's a little bit of a stressful idea. Um, but I know I serve a God who is trustworthy. And so I trust him. I don't know how it's all going to shake out. I don't know that I'm going to like how it shakes out. But I trust that he's got his hand on the situation. And, you know, what else are you going to do, you know? Um, so, and, you know, up to this point, his hand has been on my family, you know? My mother working at the hospital has been safe. She's been fine. Uh, my son hasn't had to go to the hospital in a couple of weeks. I'm grateful for that. And financially, and I hate saying this out loud because it's almost embarrassing, uh, financially, we're almost double where we were revenue-wise uh, as of now compared to where we were last year. Um, it's not quite double. It's about $500 away from our revenue being double what it was this time last year. Uh, maybe that won't hold. I don't know. Um our phones are ringing off the hook. Maybe at some point they'll stop. I don't know. But I know that I serve a God who has spent the last 16 years, probably 32, but, you know, I was paying attention the last 16 years. I serve a God who's been actually proving that he'll bring me through in these times of trouble. So I don't know how that's going to work out. No idea. I just know I serve a God who's always been there for me, and so I don't really need to worry about whether or not he's going to be here for this one. I don't really have much other much else to say about that. Um, I just wanted to pass that on to you. I know this is a weird, uh, weird Easter. You know, there's a lot of C&E Christians out there. <laughs> Christmas and Easter, you know. <laughs> um, if you get this far in the video, um, if you want to attend church with me this actually would be kind of funny maybe don't do this it'd be funny if you did but maybe don't do this i don't know we'll see do it if you want um but if you want to uh attend my church's uh gathering they do it online obviously right now uh if you search for antioch west on facebook uh you'll see it there and uh just in the comments section just be like randy invited me <laughs> be pretty funny <laughs> don't do that but maybe <laughs> if you got it this far in the video and you've actually seen this part, I don't know, maybe do that. Cause I, that actually would be kind of, <laughs> kind of funny. I don't know how my pastor would feel about it, but <laughs> it would amuse me. Um, so I just wanted to share that with you guys. I hope it was a help to you. Um, I don't know how this stuff shakes out, but I'm trusting that we serve a God who does. So I feel like this is the kind of video you end with a word of prayer. Yeah, why not? Lord Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you for allowing me to be here to talk to these folks. And thank you to whoever's listening or watching this video. Um, thank you that they're doing that. Um, I hope that what I said here was something that you wanted me to say. I was doing my best to kind of follow along with your leading. Um, and I hope it benefits somebody here. Let help folks feel and get to understand that there is a peace that passes all understanding and it's it's a peace that only you provide i thank you for giving it to me jesus and i thank you for showing me that you're there for me when even no one else might be and that you can be trusted i'm grateful for that lord i'm asking you to touch all the guys that are in girls or men and women <laughs> that are watching this video I'm asking that you would keep them safe and that you would allow their businesses to prosper. And Lord, I'm asking you to help to put in these people's hearts that have put you first. To seek you first, the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Whatever that scripture says, I need to read my Bible more. You know that. Lord, I thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity to serve you, and thank you that I get to work. In Jesus' name, amen. All right.
30 minutes. That was about what I told my wife I was going to do, and I stuck to it pretty close. It's Randy with Dolan Cut and Trim. Have a good one.